Hello, everyone, and welcome in. We're here for the back nine of the 2022 Memorial Championship round number three of the MP40 division. We're at the Shelly Sharp Disc Golf Course located in the Vista del Camino Park. I'm Terry Miller, the disc golf guy in Shasta. You can run, but you can't hide. We got Spicy Boy on the camera getting us bonus footage here of the MP40 division. We've got rounds three and four coming at you. Nothing too hot that we've seen on this lead card during the front nine. We'll see if these guys can start getting something going in the back. Steve Brinster came in as your leader at 14 under. He's just one under on the front, and he sits at 15 under. We saw the chase card, though. KJ Naibo, he's also at 15 under at this point in the round. So he's trying to make a charge from the chase card. Pete Uliberry right up the middle. Great positioning. You see that you do have to go to the right of the tree that's marked there with the arrow. So that is a mandatory. Dutch. Just too much angle on that with the forehand. And nice little flip up here. He could have done without a skip or two, but nice flip up. That should put him in good position for Shasta. Here's Dutch throwing his second, and this one is pushing to the OB sidewalk, and that's exactly where it's going to be. So he goes from turning it over too much on the previous drive to then not turning that over enough on the approach. So Dutch has work to do as Pete... Trying to put himself on the dance floor here on 10. Brinster's roller curled up to this right side. Okay, okay, that'll be a, a look for Birdie. A nice shot there by Shasta. So Dutch fully committed here to the forehand. Makes perfect sense in this position. Trying to just play it low. Get a skip to the pin. But then he catches one of the protective trees. And still has a putt to make. You see him about circle's edge. Here's Brinster for birdie. And it just really hasn't been Steve's day on the green. We've seen a lot of struggles on the front nine. He's putting himself in position to score, but just not capitalizing. Dutch from 11 meters goes to a turbo. Thanks to the PDGA scoring system, we can go out and get a few basic statistics and details of how the course played out for everyone. As we're here on hole number 10, right in the middle of the pack in terms of overall difficulty. Don't tell that to Pete, though. Hole 1 averaged 4.22 in this division. So Pete has gained the most ground on this card. He's three under through 10. Shasta trying to fight himself back to par on the round if he can. He's now one over. And the double bogey by Dutch is going to bring him to eight under overall, which means he's two over for the round. Thanks to our presenting sponsor, Discraft. 
We're now out at the longest point away from the start here on the T of 11. Starting to head back. 759 feet OB on the cart path or the sidewalk, I guess it is, on the left side and up on that right side, also out of bounds. So pretty much dead straight the entire way. There is a mandatory tree or two, so you can't play out over the the sidewalk on that left side. Pete doesn't love it, but it'll work. Basic, consistent, solid, it'll work. No problem there for Shasta. Pete's going to, or excuse me, Steve's going to play it out closer to that right side, trying to bite off a little bit more distance. I love the play there. Here's Dutch. This is fighting hard back to the left. And he's going to get the green flag, but he's going to flirt with the sidewalk on this left side. You know, I, I know I said it about hole number six. And this is a hole that if you're out of position after your first shot, sometimes you just really have to say, hey, I'm going to play for par. I'm not going to try to make the hero shot. I'm not going to turn this into a bogey or a double or anything worse. And Dutch here was in actually a good spot, but he just misfired, and that was way too stable. He's going to be out of bounds. Let's see what Brinster will do. Oh, and that'll give him a look. He's got to be happy with that. Not too many birdies to be had on this hole in the Masters division. Averaged 4.31 on the day. We see Shasta out in circle two, and what a good run. And just like back on hole number six, he comes up just short and frustrated that it got up and rolled on him, and the struggle continues here for Batman. And now you can see how just a few feet can maybe make you think a little bit more. Instead of having that gimme drop in, you give yourself the tester and then you don't pass the test. That's going to be frustrating for Shasta. Steve Brinser, the very short tap in. He'll become just the third player in the division to get birdies on or get a birdie here on 11. His good buddy, Craig Cutler. Grabbed the birdie a little earlier, and the card in front of this one, KJ, also grabbed the birdie. So just three birdies on the day on hole number 11. And they're going to head over to 12, playing over the water. 377 to the pin, about 340, maybe 330, if you're going directly at the pin in order to clear the gunite wall here. Maybe even a little more than that, actually. I want to say that's right around Circle's Edge. I'm often going to have some fisher, fishermen and women hanging out near this pavilion. A little added distraction. Oh, but Brinster's birdie hunting. 
Beautiful tee shot. And this hole is clearly daunting. 377 uphill. Let's see if Pete can get himself in bounds. And that checks up very quickly. That could he easily skip to the left and out of bounds, but it checks up for him. Shasta's going to maybe play it a little safer coming to the short side and just barely clearing, but he's going to be safe. That's layup territory from over there. He's just playing for a three. I, I love the committed game plan. He's not trying to attack the pin. He's not trying to get it close. He's just trying to find inbounds and walk away with without a bogey stroke on his card. And you see Shasta, that didn't even get above the basket. And I love it. Just full commitment to the layup, full commitment to the three. And Dutch, or Batman, uh, known as really an incredible putter. And unfortunately, that hasn't proven to be the case here during this round. But he is truly an incredible putter. So we're seeing him well out of sorts at the moment. And we've seen him on tilt for the last few holes. Oh, and that's just not right. You saw he went down to pick up his mini. He thought he hit it right where he needed to. I'm not sure if the wind aided in pushing that out, but Dutch... Wow. On tilt and frustrated, and then to throw a good putt and not have it stay in. And <laughs> I know I'm laughing only because I'm not in the group playing right now. This is this is a little frustrating. So Pete's gonna walk away with a par. Brinster steps up. He's got the easy birdie. Oh, no. You saw Dutch's reaction. You saw Shasta's reaction. Unbelievable. That just pushed right back out on Brinster. He's going to have the slam dunk to put it in for the par, but I just said it. When things aren't going your way, you're, you're looking for any kind of relief or break and then have something like that happen to tack on top of it. Just brutal. And the double bogey for Batman, just bleeding strokes at this point. They're going to have a very long walk. We're going to take another look. It, that's heartbreaking. They head over to 13. We're back on the regular portion of the course, so to speak. And we're going to go up and over what would be the short basket or a shorter location. We're playing, of course, the XL layout here, tucked up against the backwater. Very much a bonus birdie by all accounts on this hole. Truly a power throw is required some kind of big power drive to get there. And then even then you have to decide if you want to go after the putt, depending how close you are. Oh, shit, there it was. Well, there it goes. Just, uh, I've got no polite words other than just a complete shank. I'm not sure if maybe something happened with his arm or his shoulder or his timing or a... Uh, a complete mental lapse, but a shank leading to well out of bounds for Pete. I, I was just thinking, I love the line. That's pretty much what you want to do, maybe with a little more power, but I like the line there by Dutch. So 
Pete gets to get, take a little distance. He's just going to move up, but hole number 13 here not doing him any favors. And this is, again, textbook layup territory. There's not much you can do from where Shasta was. I do love the aggression. Batman's got to get something going after just bleeding strokes. Another hit. Another unnecessary roll. So Dutch will walk away with the par. This plate is the fifth most difficult hole on the course. Average 3.47, and spoiler alert, no birdies. Not a single birdie out of all of our Masters competitors during this third round. And quite honestly, that's not surprising. This is a bonus birdie. FPO. Even MPO, I, I think they kind of consider that a bonus. It's not one of the easier ones to get. Well, we're going to head over to 14, 655 feet. I'm going to kind of go up and over some of the action. This is a par four. OB on the left, OB sidewalk on the right. There's a mandatory that you have to stay to the left of so that you don't get too close to the sidewalk. Hole 14 plays as one of the easier holes on the course. At least it does today. <laughs> you hear Brinster with his assessment, and I couldn't agree more. It's been some round all right. Well played shot for Shasta. The stability, the skip, a little bit of everything. Just he's going to get all the distance, but that's going to be out of bounds for Dutch. That's a well placed shot there by Pete. So, although I thought Steve was re teeing, he's not. He's just at the shorter tee, or, or actually, he's a different hole if you're out here playing casually. So he'll have a long look at saving, well, a sa long look for birdie yet. Hopefully, worst case scenario, a par. Again, when it's playing as one of the easiest holes on the course, though, it's really tough to be okay with a par. Dutch took his meter, goes with the forehand. Just not enough on it. I mean, he's got the distance, but pulled that one up short. There is OB behind the basket. It's kind of a semicircle surrounding the backside of the basket. It's a good 30 to 40 feet, though, behind it. Brinster doesn't get that one to drop either. Dutch is going to do the best he can after going out of bounds. He's still going to walk away with a par. Dutch now sitting at five over for today's round. Dutch might be struggling a little bit, but I believe he may be... The only competitor in all of disc golf has a Smashbox TV tattoo. I don't have one. Johnny V, who I started the company with, doesn't have one. I think Dutch is the... I think. Now, if you guys can correct me, put it in the comments. But I believe Dutch, a.k.a. Batman, 
The only competitor with a Smashbox TV tattoo. Can't can't thank him enough. Shasta doing some work. And Brinster will walk away with the par. He's just two under for today's round. That ties with Pete for best round on the card thus far. Hi, I'm Andrew Marweed, and for the last three years, I've been one of the top putters in the world. I chose the DGA Steady for its straight, consistent flight path and the confidence it gives me on the green. Plus, it comes in both beaded and beadless versions with a wide variety of plastics. I prefer the Stone Steady BL, but you can find your Steady at discgolf.com. Shasta Chris, of course, sponsored by DGA as well. Um, he didn't love it, but it's in the middle, perfectly safe. He won't be too mad about it. Pete trying to put the roller down. And the question is, how much is it going to fight the wind? And then it ultimately rolls up on that right side. That's great positioning. That's going to give him some options on his second shot. It's got some good D. And Brinster also getting some solid distance. It continues. Just when it looks like it was about to turn over, it then fights its way back. That's a huge roll for Brinster. And you see... Dutch pushing to that left side. Looks like it checks up just short of the OB sidewalk. You have to go to the right of these trees. You saw the mandatory markers put on the trees there, meaning you have to go to the right of them. Those two trees with the red tape on. I want you it's to prevent you from throwing over a sidewalk. And Dutch keeps it low and beats the Mando, but then... Just too much stability, and and that's uh, that's been the theme. Every mistake that he's made has been left with too much stability. So he's almost as if he's overcompensating for the winds that are out there. Ten out of ten would take this drive. This is a great drive by all accounts in any division. Everybody would be. Wildly pleased with that drive. Steve didn't get the skip he wanted on the second shot, but the drive's incredible. So that's my question for you guys. You know, I ask one every time. I need you to put it in the comments. What's your roller game like? And I know I asked that not too long ago, but... Uh, I asked you to give me a movie relating to it. Just tell me what your roller game is like. And if you see the advantage, I mean, some people talk about rollers on different styles of courses with low ceilings. Here, it's not a low ceiling at all. I think Steve was being sarcastic. So... That's what I want you to leave in the comments. So tell me uh, if you see the advantages of the rollers, if you're throwing them, if you are, or why aren't you? Have you not learned them? That's what I want to know. Put that in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. Do all the, you know, those YouTube things that I have to beg you to do. Become a Patreon supporter if you want. Patreon.com slash the disc golf guy. But I've got stuff to give away. We're going to set up a coupon system on shop.thediscgolfguy.com and eventually that's how we'll be giving away all of our giveaways now I, it's a little longer process where I mail stuff out to you but 
eventually we're going to be just sending you to my website with a gift code. And that's how you're going to be selecting the stuff that you want. We'll get there. We'll get there. But I do hope you're enjoying the bonus footage here. MP40 action. I got the final round. That will be, of course, coming up next. We got rounds three and four. Don't look for rounds one or two. You're not going to find them. Well, if you, you look, it'll, you'll be looking for a while. As we're on 16, 390 feet. This feels somewhat like a bonus. It just requires such a delicate shot, either that or where you're going after a risky putt. Hole 16 averaged 3.31, and you can hear just how much the wind is ripping. And that's going to be safe. You are allowed to tee off to the sides of the tee pads uh, anytime there's a whisker or an indicator on this course, this hole being one of them. You see that white whisker in the center of your screen there. That is essentially the right side of the tee pad. So you could not tee off to the left. And we see Brinster go down and a wincing in pain there. Let's see how that affects him. He's got not only a few holes to finish out here, but also hopefully championship Sunday. And again, left side for Dutch. Let's see Steve collecting himself there. Not sure where his pain level is at at the at that moment but it's definitely makes me kind of wince myself just a little bit seeing someone else in pain after a throw like that and you see very quickly up there by Shasta I think we've caught on to his game plan on a number of these holes Steve moving in for his par. Just three birdies on this hole. Mike Jewell, John Booth, and Cut, Craig Cutler. So not birdied often. Keep that in mind as we try to close out round number four. And just two holes left to play in round three. They're heading over to 17. One of the easiest ones to get. And if you want to ship your disc safely and securely and protected, reach out to me. You might need to order yourself a carton of my Disc in a Box shipping mailers. They can hold one, two, or three discs, depending on the size, and... They will come in lighter and cheaper than if you go order from some generic company. So glad to make those for disc golfers so you can ship your discs securely. And who doesn't love my disc in a box? I mean, the ultimate Christmas gift, but really it could be year-round. It's my disc in a box. And Pete improves on the throw before him. He's going to be parked right next to the pin. Brinster, I talked about this in the front nine. I know it's just 243 downhill, but he's kind of made this a signature move of his throughout his entire career of going just with a standstill, and yet he gets it closer. And Batman, a little bit of frustration, was ready to get up and fire immediately. So four pretty solid drives. I don't think I did mention in the front, though, Steve Brinster inducted into the New York State Disc Golf Hall of Fame back in 2020. Has over 400 tournaments played with winning more than 100 of them, so almost a, almost a 
25% win ratio of tournaments he's played in. I think he's played about 415 or 400. Yeah, about 415 tournaments as of here. A little more than 101. And look at that. We're going to have the star frame. Hole 17 played as the easiest on the course, in part thanks to this lead card. Just one hole to play. We head over to the 54th hole of the Memorial Championship presented by Discraft. 381 water carry right off the bat. Of course, that carries off on that left side. And then also you need to stay to the left of these two red posts or pillars that you see. Those are mandatories. Essentially think of those as a tree or something that you need to stay to the left of. Otherwise, you'll be considered to have missed the mando. You have to be left of both of them. <laughs> Shasta pegs. <laughs> he pegs the first one. So he's still has not missed the mandatory. He's going to be fine. Oh, and a great drive by Pete, also flirting with the mandatory. But he is on the safe side. Here's Brinster going with a standstill. This is just a committed layup in every sense of the word. It's so easy to either miss the Mandos or go out of bounds off to the left. So Brinster was just looking to pitch it over and then still got a goofy skip. So Dutch is off to the right. He's gone out of bounds but hasn't missed the Mandos. And so there was a, a, a healthy conversation that ensued that's not here in the video, as to whether or not he plays from this spot where he went out of bounds or if he goes to, <laughs> or if he goes to the drop zone. So there's part of the conversation of him being uncertain as to how it's going to be ruled. So I cannot stress this enough. Play a provisional, declare a provisional, and play it out in both scenarios, and then bring it to the tournament director's attention immediately following the round. And we happen to be on 18. We happen to be right next to Tournament Central. It works out perfectly. Play both scenarios. Call provisional and play them both out. You do not get penalized for playing a provisional shot. No. Stop. And just like nine, we see Pete flirting with the out of bounds, but he's going to stay in. And so after the layup and the second shot, Brinster's going to walk away with the bogey. And now Dutch has now officially played them both out both ways. In this case, it's not going to matter what the official ruling was because either way it was a double bogey. That rarely is the case. You, usually there's a stroke difference or two between how two shots get played out. And in this case, it's regardless of what the ruling ended up being, because either way he was taking the double bogey. Pete works hard to save the par. And we're going to close things out, guys. We have 54 holes essentially now in the books. 
18 holes to play on Championship Sunday. We've seen Steve Brinster with a few putting woes and also maybe an injury, but he battles to the two under par. Pete had the hottest score on this card at a two under. Dutch struggled to get a nine over, and Shasta ultimately finished with even. So that means for Championship Sunday, your lead card is going to feature Steve Brinster, KJ Naibo, Pete Ulibarri, and Shasta Chris. Steve Rico, a few strokes off the pace. We'll see if the chase card does anything. I'm the Disc Golf Guy. Like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you for round four.